Two people are dead in Loveland after a man shot them and then took off to Erie. They said they were looking for a guy named Javier Acevedo, 49 years old. 660 Crimson Way, if you guys can get in there quick, he's getting close. That you is Javier Acevedo. We've already told you what he did last summer, and now we're learning more about what didn't happen before the shooting. And that story starts with a phone call. My mother called me on the phone. I was like, my, I was at the scene within 20 minutes. Garen Dom got a call that something happened at his sister Lindsay's house, and it's something that he always knew could eventually come one day. In July of last year, Javier Acevedo went to his ex-girlfriend's house, Lindsay's house, and shot and killed her and her 16-year-old daughter, Meadow Center. That's your suspect. Uh, still holding the rifle, still holding the magazine. The footage we got from the Loveland Police Department really shows just how chaotic that day was. If you do not comply with commands, force me to use the gun shoot. Police are scrambling, and they eventually find Javier Acevedo in Erie, and he is holding the gun that he used to kill Lindsay and Meadow that day. He ends up killing himself, too. It's like your entire life starts over on this day, you know, everything, it, it changes everything. We know that he purchased the gun he used to kill Lindsay and Meadow a few months before a court required him to give up his guns. They could have gotten that gun, you know. He should have had to physically relinquish that gun. Acevedo's ex-wife asked a Denver County court to grant her a criminal protection order, and that's what they did. And as a part of that, they required Acevedo to give up any guns he had at the time. On the firearm relinquishment form, you can see that Javier Acevedo checked a box saying he did not possess a gun at the time. We know that he purchased the gun a few months before he signed a piece of paper saying he had to relinquish any firearms he had. You just take his word for it? No, absolutely not. You couldn't take this person's word for anything. The guy was a compulsive liar. What do you think he intended when he bought that shotgun? That's what I think about more than anything now. This case was handled by the Denver City Attorney's Office, and that office said they don't have a role in verifying the truthfulness of what's said on a firearm relinquishment form. Basically, they just don't check. But unless someone is to say that you are lying on that form or committing perjury, there is no way to really enforce that. Katie Wolf is the public policy director for Violence Free Colorado, and she really gets this stuff because she works with lawmakers in our state on bills related to domestic violence. Denver sees about 20, more than 2,500 domestic violence cases at the municipal level every year. And so it'd be really hard and a lot of resources for them to be able to investigate every single relinqu relinquishment form. Garen was really upset that no one checked and he thinks that that should change. They're just like, oh, here, sign here. Oh, you're already in enough trouble. Here, just check this little box to say you don't have any guns. How easy would it have been to find out that he had purchased that firearm? Katie knows that we can't create a database like that because our state constitution makes it illegal. It would be a lot easier if there were a way to just check to see if people had guns, if there was a database where where people's names were listed. Um, the Colorado Constitution prohibits that from happening. Lindsay went to a Larimer County court twice asking for a protection order against Acevedo, and both times a judge denied her request, saying there just wasn't enough evidence. In one of those requests, she said Acevedo threatened to kill her. When she was denied the protection order the second time, it was just a month before Acevedo killed her. Feeling even remotely like that was enough is the biggest thing for me. I feel so, I mean, that's just the guilt that I deal with, like, every single day. Garen was incredibly upset. He felt like he put too much trust and faith in a system that was supposed to protect his sister. You always are going to feel like there's so much more you could have done, but I mean, I, I really, I mean, I feel like a total sucker. He had a lot of hesitancies talking about his sister's case. But because there were so many warning signs, he felt it was important to talk about really the worst day of his life. Um, it's hard for me to, you know, look back and think about things like, well, like Meadow, for example, you know, and look at that picture and go, oh, it's hard for me to remember. Oh, yeah, I remember she was such a happy kid, you know, and things like that. It's That stuff is really hard to even fathom now. On the day that Lizzie Dom and Meadow Center were killed, the 16-year-old had just finished her internship with the Colorado Youth Congress. People need to hear this and people need to know, yeah, this is the this is the state you live in. Two times a woman in Loveland asked a judge to make her ex-boyfriend give up his guns and stay away from her home. 
Now, the Denver District Attorney's Office, which handles the misdemeanor and felony charges, they do have a firearm relinquishment investigator. They focus on domestic violence cases and they check when defendants say they don't have a gun on those forms. They think they're the only jurisdiction in the state which has this type of investigator. The city attorney's office says they don't have one of these because they handle municipal cases sure. which don't trigger the federal law which prohibits someone from having a gun. Yeah, that's the state that we live in. I mean, people should be aware of that. I mean, this is a family that tried to do everything right to protect themselves. Yeah, I mean, Lindsay again tried twice and another woman in Denver County tried again too. Um, what Katie Wolf was mentioning is we didn't have these firearm relinquishment forms before. That is something that is relatively new, but in Garen's you know, position, he's like, you know, even though we have these forms, he just feels like this is just a piece of paper that people sign and feels that there should be a check to make sure that this doesn't happen. I think maybe you just take for granted, I would think that these checks and balances were would be in place for you to kind of reveal that it's not there is shocking. Denver District Attorney's Office said with this firearm relinquishment investigator, they have been able to relinquish more than 100 firearms from about 50 defendants. Mm -hmm. That was just from last year. So we'll kind of see how that works. But again, really rare to have something like that. Thank you for that. Appreciate it, Kelly. Thanks.